Hey everybody, my name is Reggie Bibb. I'm the new director of diversity and inclusion for Wiley ISD. I'm very excited to get started and I'm excited to work with you all and serve you all in this new role. Uh, my goal with this video is just to introduce myself and to talk a little bit about my role this year moving forward and the role of my department. Um, but first, I want to just get us started thinking about and start to defining um, what diversity and inclusion looks like on our campuses and as a district. You should all have a processing document in front of you with four questions. The first question is, what does diversity and inclusion look like on your campus? So if you could take the first five minutes and with your table group, start to brainstorm and write down ideas of what DNI looks like on your campus. There's no wrong idea. There's no wrong thoughts. I just want us to start getting to think, start thinking about DNI and start defining what DNI looks like so we can have a shared vision of what diversity and inclusion looks like in Wiley ISD. After five minutes, we'll come back together, maybe have a couple of groups share, and then we'll continue on with the presentation. All right, so now that we've begun to define what DNI looks like in Wiley ISD, I wanna take the next couple of minutes just to let you know who I am, why I'm in education, and why this role means so much to me. It starts with my start in education. Growing up, it was never my goal to be a teacher. Um, I played basketball in college, and when I finished playing, I was fortunate that my head coach saw something in me and invited me to come back and be one of his assistant coaches. When I got there, there was a kid from South Grand Prairie who was a very, very hard worker, but he wasn't necessarily the most talented basketball player. The kid would do everything we asked him to do, but he was struggling to score. And if you know anything about basketball, um, you got to be able to put the ball in the basket. So the kid came to me one day and he said, hey, coach, I'm really struggling. Is there something you can you can help me with? Meet me in the gym and, and then um, and then I'll show you a few things. I was showing the kid a few things and then all of a sudden you could just see it click instantly for him. You know that look in a kid's eyes when when the light bulb goes off in their head and you could just see it with Lindsay. Not only did you see, could you see it in his eyes, he started running around the gym just super excited. Um, from that moment on, I knew I was a teacher, a coach, and an educator. And that, that moment, it, it completely changed my world. And if you have any like real in-depth conversations with me, what you, one thing you'll see is I always, I always like talking about changing the world because I feel like we have that power every day because we work with kids and we work with people. And I feel like we have the ability to change the world. And, and I, I believe it because I've seen it happen firsthand. There's a picture I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys right now. Um, that kid in that red hat, that's Lindsey Huey. Lindsey Huey went from a struggling college basketball player. Later that year, he was named an All-American, and he went on to be a Division I basketball player. The way I know that we have the ability to change lives is if you look closely at number 11, that little girl right there is my daughter. So the, the work that we did with Lindsey changed Lindsey's life. He went from an average basketball player to a star. Um, the special part about that is, is Lindsey's now changing my kid's life. And so that right there, changing kids' lives, is the reason why I am in education. So now, after I talk about my why I'm in it, I can't go any further without talking about why I do everything that I do. This next picture I'm going to show you is a picture of my family. You don't know me if you don't know my family. My wife, Alyssa, my oldest daughter, Alexa Kay, she's going into fourth grade. My middle daughter, London Mila, who's going into the second grade. And my youngest daughter, Zoe Love, who's going to be a kindergartner. They're all going to be at Cox Elementary next year. I always laugh and say, this is the picture that everybody sees. But this next picture is the picture that daddy sees. It's not always sunshine and rainbows in my house. But the last, the, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. And um, this is just the third picture. of just It really shows their personalities. Um, I, I've been saying that diversity and inclusion work is, is very similar. Um, some people... I've been calling for for work like this for years. Um, I've been in Wally ISD for 10 years, and when I first got out here, people were saying, man, hey, we need something like this. Um, on the other hand, there's some people that just honestly don't see the need for it yet. Um, the truth is always somewhere in the middle, and it's my job and why I'm here and why I'm excited about this role is to help figure out where exactly we are as, as campuses and in districts, and just to help everybody um, feel more included and more valued and more loved and appreciated moving forward. This role is, is very personal uh, for me. A little bit of my background um, is 
I grew up in Mesquite, Texas. I went to Price Elementary School at a time where Price looked a lot like Wiley in some of our campuses here in Wiley. Um, I was one of only three black kids in my class. It was me, it was uh, Prentice Grant and Latisse Elliott. In fifth grade, D.D. Green moved in. And um, the only time I ever really saw myself in education growing up in elementary school was uh, when we talked about three things. When we talked about slavery, when we talked about Jim Crow, and we talked about the civil rights movement. Um, I was very fortunate my mom was a middle school principal. My dad was a great dad. He was always, he was the super dad for, for all of my friends. Um, so I had a great upbringing and I had a really good experience in, in growing up. But I didn't realize, it, honestly, until I was an adult of how the way that I saw myself or the lack of seeing myself in education really affected me. I realized a lot of the anxieties that I have right now come from the fact that you know, I worked really hard to succeed in, in, in the classroom. But at the same time, the only time I saw myself were and, and people that look like me were in negative situations. So that really impacted the edge type of educator that I am. My goal at every campus that I've been at, starting at Burnett Junior High School, um, was to make for sure that every kid that was around me and every kid on my campus, they knew that Coach Biff cared. They knew that they had somebody they could go to. As a coaching staff at Burnett Junior High School, that was one of the things we took on, is we wanted to make for sure that every kid on our campus had a special relationship with somebody so they all felt included. Um, so when this role came open, man, I, I just wanted to jump at it because I just I have a heart for this role and I have a heart for all of our kids. And so when you guys see me coming around, just understand that, that I'm always looking for the kids and how I can help the kids. And I'm always looking to you guys and how I can help you all. So I would like to take the next five minutes to look at the second question on our processing document. Um, statistics show, the facts show, that we have higher expectations for kids that look like us. So I think it's very important that we're intentional of seeking out groups that don't look like us and just making for sure that those kids are engaged and inspired. So that next question, it talks about, think about a minority student or a minority group of students and think about how you can engage that group of students or that student and inspire them. In five minutes, we'll come back and talk about it. All right, my mom was a middle school principal in Mesquite for years. She used to tell me about this professional development that her and Angie Nichols from Wally High used to do um, about the backpacks. And so she said they would show up to the PD with the backpack on and they would start to talk about talk to their teachers about all the things that kids needed to bring in their backpacks to have success, the pens, the pencils, the homework. Um, but then she would say that kids also bring different things that we can't see to school in their backpacks. And I want you to think about in a pre-COVID, pre-George Floyd, non-election year, what normal kids bring in their backpack. Um, our kids come to us with so many different issues from home, from lack of food, lack of sleep, um, parents passing away, parents in jail, parents overseas in the army. Um, for us to connect with and best teach our students, we have to begin to unpack what's in their backpack. When we think about what our kids are going to come to this year, this fall, um, we just need to be prepared mentally um, to, to take these kids in and to meet these kids where they are and to be intentional about helping, reaching, reaching them and connecting with them. Um, and sticking with that backpack theory, one of the things that we're going to do this year in my department is we're teaming up with a man named Corey Powell from Texas Tech. He's in the Diversity and Inclusion Department at Texas Tech. What he's going to help us do is unpack our backpacks as a school district. This year, he's going to do uh, help us go through an audit of our culture and our diversity. And at the end of this year, he's going to be able to tell us what our strengths and our assets are and also show us where some of our growth areas are. And so hopefully at the end of the year, our goal is to have a game plan and an action plan for how to move forward for the next three to five years in terms of being more culturally and diverse and more inclusive. So what I'd like for us to do right now in the next five minutes is one thing he asked for me is, is to start the process of thinking about what are some of the things that we can measure in Wiley ISD. One of the things off the top of our head is, is, is discipline, is looking at who, who we're disciplined and what sub pops we're disciplining the most. One of the things that we're proud of in, in Wiley ISD is, is six years ago we recognized a need. We recognized that we were, were disproportionately sending our uh, African-American male students to DAEP. 
over the last five years, we recruit, uh, reduced those those uh, DAP places by 600%. So just by being intentional about looking at our data, um, we were able to, to fix a need. And so when we start thinking about some of the things that we want to measure, like, of course, discipline is, is a big thing. Another thing that comes to my mind are, are looking at our demographics of our PTA and seeing if that matches the demographics of our campus. So if you could take the next five minutes and just think about some of the ways that we can measure um, diversity and inclusion on your campuses. All right, the last thing we need to talk about are every campus has been appointed a diversity and inclusion liaison. Right now, we're in the process of meeting with them and, and really fleshing out what their role is going to be on the campus and on the district level. Um, some of the things that we're looking for them is to serve on the superintendent council, to meet with myself, um, to just kind of be a, a, a source and a resource and a go-to at every campus um, if you guys have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, that's one of the first people that y'all can go to. And we really want our kids and our parents to understand that that's a person that they can reach out to and, and that they can collect, start to collect data, start to collect needs, start to, start to share best practices. So if we could finish these last five minutes with you guys brainstorming and thinking about what are the characteristics that you'd like out of your diversity and inclusion liaison, and what are some of the things that you feel like they can help you with and help your campus families with. So the last five minutes, if we could take um, and think about the characteristics of a liaison and what you feel like that role could be on your campus. In closing, I just wanted to thank you all and let you all know that I'm here for you and I'm here to serve you all. Um, when you see me on campus, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any thoughts, questions, and concerns that you might have. We are working on getting more training, more diversity training and more cultural awareness training so we can all be better for students. Um, just good luck this year. I know it's a lot going on, but I believe in you all. Uh, just know that I'm one more resource for you all to help you all be the best that you can for students.